Hey guys, Ryan Gill here in the shop, and we're going to work on putting snakeskins on the back of one of our bows. So, there's a couple things I want to cover before we even get started in this. When you get your snakeskins, you want ones that are dried like this, dehydrated. Now they can be either cured out with salt, borax, or even just air dried, but you want to avoid snakeskins that are tanned especially if they're using something like glycerin because any sort of oils that we add into this is going to keep it from adhering to the back of our bow. Now what we're working with today is a pair of western diamond back skins and when it's all said and done they're going to look very very similar to this bow right here. And This is my personal primitive high plains model and what we're actually working on the bow down here that you can't even see yet is one of my more modern or fancy versions of the High Plains model in which we primarily use the Western Diamondback skins. Now you can get these at a lot of places. Western Diamondbacks are not uh, a rare snake at all whatsoever, but if you are looking for them, you can find them on HuntPrimitive.com. We'll drop a link down in the description. Now when you get these, when you get these skins, you have to rehydrate them. So you're going to get them by the pair. This is just one, but I've got a pair of them that are already soaking. So you're just going to take some cool water and you're going to soak them just like in here, which you can't hardly see. I'm going to dump it out everywhere. And then they'll start to soften up really, really nice. And the next step, of course, is after they've been soaking for about 10 or 15 minutes and it become very supple, is you're going to take them out, wring them off, and then turn, lay them on a bench so the flush side faces up. And you can either take a knife or even a spoon and you want to make sure that you scrape, gently scrape, you don't want to tear the skin, gently scrape every bit of fat off the skin possible. You don't want any flesh or membrane left on these skins because that will stop it from adhering to your bow as well. So these ones are already scraped, they're really really clean. Now we're going to go out and wash it with a degreasing dish soap, say like Dawn dish detergent put a few drops in here and you're going to really wash these and then rinse them well. We want to make sure we take all the oils out of these. So we're going to go wash these ones and then we're going to come in and we're going to get to work on the bow. All right. Now while our skins are washing and soaking, I wanted to show you these two different bows that we have right here. And the one you can see the snake skin goes all the way to the very tip. And this one, it stops short. Now this is a preference, but I wanted to point this out that I used to like to do my bows like this. I wanted. I always wanted to run them all the way to the very tip. I preferred the way that that looked. But what I noticed was is as you unstring your bow and we typically keep the string sliding down on your limb is all of this here ends up getting very very tattered looking over a period of time. Let's focus that in. See if you can see how it's starting to peel all the scales up. Well then all along the edges here your skin starts to peel and you're constantly fighting it and it, honestly it doesn't look good over a period of time. Now what I started to do instead was even though I didn't necessarily like the way that it looked is I started to stop the skin short, wrap it with sinew and this one happens to be painted. A lot of times I don't paint, I just run regular wood the rest of the way out on the tip. And I actually, now I prefer the way that this looks but what this also does is it keeps the skin from being rashed by the string as you unstring it. So keep that in mind as you are applying the skins to your bow. Alright, now that our skins are all clean, now keep in mind we don't want to let them completely dry back out so we need to apply them relatively fast but we can always rehydrate them later. Now make sure you do a little bit of a test fit on these first. Make sure you have plenty of skin, which we obviously do. We have way, 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 way more than we need. At this point now, you can decide what direction you want the scales to face. You can test fit the patterning to see how the diamonds lay. And there's also normally towards the head, you normally have a darker pattern versus towards the tail. It tends to get a little bit more washed out and lighter. Now some people do really like this little banding at the end by the tail. And some of the skins have these and some of them don't. I typically don't use this simply because it's very thin. A lot of times they do look nice up by the tips if we were going to run the skin all the way to the tip. But you can decide how you want it to lay. And like I said, I like to take right about where the head was cut off is where some of the patterns are the prettiest. And I'll slide that over the handle just where the handle wrap will cover it. And sometimes you can go down a little bit further as well. But we're just going to make sure that we test fit this, make sure that it does look good. And once we've decided 
where the skin is going to lay. Now's a good time is I can lay this in here and it doesn't hurt to keep it a little extra long for now. I'll take a sharp pair of scissors and I will just shear that right off. Now if you've got a lot of extra space just like we do, we've got a lot of extra side belly skin hanging over this will slow it down from drying a little bit so what I recommend is you lay it down on your bench and you trim all of these sides down you don't have to trim them to fit exact but the more that hangs over the side the longer it will actually take for your skin to dry all right now that our sides are cut and there's still plenty of room for it to hang over but this way it doesn't completely wrap around because all we really wanted to do is stick right on the back and we'll show that again here in a few minutes. Now this bow also happens to be rawhide backed. So if you watch the rawhide tutorial video that we did, this is actually the bow that we did that tutorial on, I think. And what we're taking now, and this is going to be the same process even if you're just using a wood back, but this one does happen to be rawhide backed. We're going to take about 80 grit sandpaper and we're going to do circular motions just like we did when we put the rawhide down because we want to scuff the whole surface of this so we have a good glue adhesion. So scuff the whole limb and then we can glue them down. Now we're ready to apply the glue and again I'm using Type Bond 3 wood glue. It's a good waterproof wood glue and I'm going to make sure that we put a line of glue right down the center of the skin. We're going to rub that in and make sure we cover just about every bit of that skin that we can with this glue. I don't want to make a huge mess, but we want to make sure that every bit of that skin on the flesh side, not the show side obviously, is covered in glue. We want this glue line to be very nice. We don't want air bubbles in it. So now after we get done putting the glue on the skin, we're going to run the same glue line up to where we want it on the bow. And we're going to massage that glue in to the back of the bow. You want to make sure that you get every bit of this really massaged in well with this glue. And try to keep it relatively thin but you don't have to completely wipe it clean. Really get it along these edges because these edges are going to be the first places that want to lift if you don't have glue on there. Anywhere that there's no glue, you're not going to have good adhesion of the skin. So rub that in really well. Now, it's as simple as taking your skin, being careful, of course, not to get glue all over absolutely everything, and lay it right on where you would like it to go. Roll some of that extra glue off your fingers. And now all you need to do is kind of work this skin around till it centers up on your limb. And a little tip that I've seen other people fail to do is they'll lay their skin down on the bow but they don't actually look for symmetry in the diamonds and they'll have the diamonds off to one side or the other side and then when you trim these edges later they're completely off the one side of the limb so take good careful note that when you lay your skins down to look for symmetry now if you have wiggles in your bow snake remember snake got wiggles too you can maneuver this around so if you have wiggles don't put your skin straight Take the time and taxi that skin around. That's where the term taxidermy comes from anyway, is taxiing skin. Taxi that skin around any little curves that you have. All right, now once you have your positioning where you want it, now you're gonna go along and you're gonna work out every air bubble and excess glue bubble that you can find. And there's no sense being in a rush on this. I like to roll my finger and walk the glue or the air bubbles up. Now, what will happen is you will have glue in many instances that will bleed out over the sides and you'll glue the skin to the side of the bow. And there's nothing wrong with that because we can remove that really easily later. So don't worry about trying to hold these edges out 
to keep them from gluing. In fact, what I typically do is I try to glue them down oh, not very far, maybe a, an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth. I don't really pay that much attention to it, but I want to glue them down. Now I know I have a good glue line, because if you try to pull these up right to the edge, you could have spots that don't have a good glue line, and you want to avoid that. So I don't mind folding the skin over the edges a little bit. And then continue to work those air bubbles up and glue bubbles just like this. And you're going to have all these little scales that it's going to pop off on you, and that stuff's completely normal. I so said we need to remove those later anyway. That's a very important part of this, is removing those loose scales, but we're going to do that later. Now, decide where your skin, where you want it to stop. Hopefully you marked it, or you have rawhide like I do. Now you know exactly where you want it to stop. And we cut that off just perfect. And squish that extra glue down. And now go back over this three or four times. Make sure your alignment's where you want it to be. And also make sure that you have every glue and air bubble out of this. Do a good job now because trying to fix an air bubble later that's dry and in there and now you're trying to cut a slit and lift it and put glue in it and then fold it back down is not fun. So do a good job the first time. What, see all those scales coming off? I don't know if y'all can see them. Now's not a bad time at all. If loose scales want to fly off, let them fly off because we got to remove them anyway. So knock all that stuff off. You don't have to worry about getting them all off now, but we'll do that once it's dry. All right, now this looks pretty good. I'm going to go over it probably two or three more times. I'm going to do the other limb, but I don't need to show you that. It's the same exact process. And we're going to let this dry overnight. And then we'll come back in the morning and we'll show cutting the sides off. And then we can be done. Now that it's the next morning, you can see all this is pretty dry. If it comes up really easily, then you know it's not dry yet. But if it makes the peeling sounds, then it should be dry enough. Now you want to be careful, you don't want to just go ahead and pull that straight up. You're going to work it up all the way up and down right until you have maybe just like a little sixteenth of an inch. You don't want to pull it straight up to the edge because if you do that you could separate it on the back. Although we work the glue line out really well so we should have good glue adhesion on the back and we didn't on the sides. So that's why the sides should peel a little bit easier than the back does. Anyway, so now once all this is pulled up all the way around, then you can take a very sharp knife and basically work right along that edge, just like that. And once you clean that up, then you can come back with your knife very carefully and this is where it helps to have a very 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 sharp knife and we're not wanting to shave into the wood we're just separating the glue line from the bow itself now when you're also when you're cutting and working anything with any sort of tool sandpaper a knife anything on the snakeskin work with the scales as much as you can instead of against the scales because you as you work against these scales especially before you have any sort of finish on you will start lifting all those little scale edges so once this is all cleaned off then you can use your knife as a scraper to scrape the rest of the glue off and you want to make sure you do get all the rest of the glue off because you'll notice it when you put a finish on the bow that it won't look like the rest of the wood. Trying to put finish over glue doesn't look the same as finish over wood. And then once that's all scraped clean then you'll be able to gently sand this and even sand, sand slightly over top of the skin to kind of bevel it in just ever so slightly but as you do that remember sand down instead of sanding up which would promote the possibility of peeling the skin and also it lifts the scale so you sand down and with 
the scales if you were going to sand a little bit to just bevel these edges and 80 grits a little bit so this is the motion you're going to use and normally I wouldn't use 80 but I'm doing it very very lightly just to show you I'll knock down to uh, about 120 whenever I do this and that will clean up your edges and it'll look really nice just like that now the other option too is if you do have a bench sander you can with light uh, grit sanding pads you can put this on here and actually just sand that edge as long as you hold it carefully so the sander isn't going to be raking and pulling against your skin so again if you angle it away as you run across the sander you can cut on sand all of this off all at one time but for a long time that's how I did it and that's how most of you are going to want to do it at home because it's a little safer a little bit easier and that's going to give you a nice finished product for your skin. Now, after that's all said and done and you've trimmed the whole bow out, you're going to go with the scales, not against them, with the scales, with a fingernail, with your fingers, and you're going to you fan back and forth. But we got to get all these scales, these loose scales off, because when you apply a finish to this bow, any of these loose scales that are on here are going to take the finish with it whenever they do fall off. And they'll also, the ones that are stuck there, will turn milky and they won't look very good. And then once all these thin ones are off, then it's also going to feel a lot nicer along the back as well. And the colors actually brighten. So now, if you do need to use a knife, which I recommend doing very, very, very gingerly if you do want to use a knife, is you don't use it like you're cutting, you use it like you're scraping. And that's usually enough to just grab some of these scales and pull them off. But I do recommend using a finger as much as you can because you can get carried away using a knife and essentially scratch and gouge your skin up. So if you're going to do do it with a knife, take your time. The other option too is taking tape, which I've done as a good tape, a duct tape or a, a packing tape, and you can put it on here. But the problem is you run through a lot of tape and you still end up having to go back and look for every tiny little scale that you missed. And by the time I'm actually done pulling all of the bulk of these scales off, I'll go all the way back to the beginning of the skin and I will quite literally go scale by scale and make sure that every single one, see there's one that I missed, I'd go like that. I'd make sure that every single scale has been cleaned because some of them look like they've been cleaned and they actually haven't. But if you go row by row, it's amazing how many you'll find and say, wow, I completely missed that one. So I'm still pulling up scales that I missed. It doesn't take as long as you think. It's going to take you 10 minutes to go through every single scale. I mean, it's not like we're going to sit here and go, oh, here's one scale. Two, you know, we're just making sure I put my eyes and my blade on every single scale. And then once it's all completely clean from the scales, you'll notice that it looks a lot smoother, a lot nicer. And then once the bow is completely sanded down and ready to finish, you can apply any normal uh, finish over the top of these. I have not had a problem with any sort of the finishes. Uh, lacquer, true oil, polyurethane, they all work really, really well. The more coats you put on, the better the... Uh, the scales will continue to lay as opposed to folding backwards. But one good thing about using these Western Diamondback skins is not only do they typically have very nice patterns with nice little white highlights on the diamonds, but the scales are also a little smaller than some of your really big snakes like Eastern uh, Diamondbacks or your cane breaks and water moccasins that do have some very large scales. Western Diamondbacks tend to have on the on general a little smaller scales so they lay a little bit nicer. It's another reason that I like the westerns overall. So thanks for following along. Hope you uh, feel confident doing your own snakeskin work and we'll catch you on the next adventure.